Goedemiddag. We hadden net Howard Gutman te gast, uh, ambassadeur van de Verenigde Staten hier in Brussel, om terug te blikken op de eerste verjaardag van het presidentschap van Barack Obama. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Gutman. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Um, well, one of the biggest issues President Obama had to cope with a year ago uh, when he became president was the economic crisis. Where are we w one year later and how was Obama's response to it? So I've been absolutely amazed at how far we've come and mm -hmm. there's still progress to make. Mm -hmm. um, a year ago today, many people were waking up trying to decide what bank they should move their money to because no one knew if the bank next door or the one next to that would be gone the next day. Mm -hmm. And today we're talking about how much fee to impose on bank profits. Yeah. A year ago, no one could buy a house or a business because there was no liquidity in the markets. Mm -hmm. Now we have record liquidity returns, record hedge fund profits. Mm -hmm. um, so by all measures except one, we've made an immense recovery. Mm -hmm. One place we're still lagging is jobs. Yep. It's been a jobless recovery by and large, mm -hmm. which is to be expected. Um, but my hope is in the second and even more the third quarter of this year, we should have a, the jobs pick back up and be on our way to health if we do it smart. Mm -hmm. We can never forget that we had a crisis and we have to build it better than we found it before. Mm -hmm. So instead of building cars of yesterday, build ca cars of tomorrow. Okay. Instead of building power sources of yesterday, build the power sources of tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, second big issue uh, a year ago and still now was the war in Afghanistan that uh, President Obama uh, inherited from George Bush. Um, was his response to the, the war in Afghanistan, was that an adequate response and did that came at a good time? So we have to separate the two wars. There was mm -hmm. the war in Iraq mm -hmm. that was um, wrongful in the president's opinion and he promised to withdraw. He loves peace as much as anyone and he has met his timetable to withdraw. Mm -hmm. But as anyone knows who's even thought about taking an airplane over Christmas, terror remains. Mm -hmm. Terror is coming from Al Qaeda, which right now is located in Afghanistan. So as a planet, we have to address the terror threat. Mm -hmm. I think there's complete agreement among people in Belgium and the United States that that threat cannot be addressed by a military solution. Mm -hmm. You don't beat terrorists by trying to kill each other terrorists in a military style. No. You can beat terrorists by restoring and rebuilding civilian society, functioning, operating civilian society with people going to school and work, mm -hmm. and also rebuilding a law and order in a police force. Mm -hmm. That is, uh, the assessment is that we have to give much greater effort in that regard to achieve our goals. And so President Obama called for an increase in civilian reconstruction. We sent our head of USAID, We've sent our head of the uh, Department of Agriculture. Agriculture. We've sent agricultural workers mm -hmm. to rebuild civilian society, to educate children, to re rebuild jobs, to rebuild health care. Um, so society is rebuilt. That will take care of the terrorism problem. Mm -hmm. To do that, you need increased commitment in the civilian trainers, mm -hmm. in civilian workers, mm -hmm. in police trainers, police workers. Mm -hmm. But we've seen in Haiti, you can't send them to a society that's not stable without protection. Yep. What happened just even in Haiti is you can send a BFAS team of doctors, mm -hmm. but unless you send a military to accompany them, they can't be secure. Mm -hmm. So just in Haiti, for example, Belgium had to meet the Belgian government the night before last and say we have to s provide military security yep. as well. Mm -hmm. Same thing in Afghanistan. To achieve our goals through civilian reconstruction, we've got to get all the partners Um, to work together to get the force necessary for the civilian reconstruction, mm -hmm. the agricultural workers, the trainers, the police trainers, and to also in the security that they can operate. There is no demand by the United States on any particular partner. There is no ask. There is discussions among partners about how we can together rebuild Afghani society that will take care of the terror threat. Mm -hmm. That is, build a force of civilian reconstruction, retrain the police so they can operate and do it in the secure environment. That the secure environment part to, is not the solution. It is, it is to provide the secure environment for the solution, namely the civilian reconstruction to take place. I believe everyone in Belgium, like everyone in the United States, believes in um, the civilian reconstruction of Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. I don't believe there's anyone in Belgium or the United States who believe those people should be unprotected. And therefore, we all must believe in the increased military to provide that security. No one's asking for particular contributions. 
um, but rather the partners get together and figure out how to make those contributions. Okay. But some would say, what can Belgium do? Mm -hmm. Belgium's but a small country. Those people will sell Belgium short. They will undervalue Belgium. Yeah. I will never undervalue Belgium, and I will never sell Belgium short. In fact, although Belgium may have a smaller population than some, and may have a smaller budget than some, Belgium has as much credibility or more mm -hmm. than anyone in Europe. Okay. It is that credibility that I am seeking to have uh, help this partnership. Yep. For Belgium to give 30, 50, 100, 150 more people, mm -hmm. along with material police trainers, material development aid, agriculture workers, to help rebuild the society, sends a message. If Belgium is in it, people hear it. That message will help the partnership build overall the civilian reconstruction needs in a secure environment by the military. Okay. So it's important that Belgium participate if they're able to do so. Yeah. If you look at a future for the Obama's presidency, there's, uh, that may not look so bright with difficult midterm elections uh, coming up. Um, is the White House panicking about that? So there's two different issues there. Yeah. The future is as bright as it can be. Look at the strides we've made in one year on the economy, on climate, and security with Russia, and security in the Mideast after the speech in Cairo, mm -hmm. where East and West are now talking instead of opposing. Mm -hmm. um, so the few on, cl on climate, from where we were walking up Kyoto to where we've come. So the progress has been huge. The future looks very bright. Mm -hmm. Don't confuse that with losses in the midterm election. Okay. Of necessity, in a time when the present, there's no presidential election, mm -hmm. the party that gains seats in the presidential election will lose some seats because a lot of those seats were not Democrat districts in this case. Mm -hmm. They were Republican districts that extra people came out to vote. Yeah. So naturally they'll be lost. But I think the White House has planned for it. Those issues that were close, health care, um, potentially the environment, the regulation of the economy, mm -hmm. those issues were passed in the first year and are about to be passed now. I think as we go forward, there are no agenda items particularly that depend on having large margins in the center of the House. So I think we have a very bright future for the administration. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.